Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about the recent ban on any firearm having a bore diameter of 20 millimeters or greater and what that'll mean for 10 and 12 gauge shotguns. This is an issue that gets debated online a lot. Uh, it's also been discussed in the media. We've had government figures comment on it. So the next time you're in a dispute over this, feel free to link this video and hopefully that'll settle it. I might be being a little bit optimistic here. Now, if you're not familiar with the issue here, what this is, is it's talking about the internal diameter of a shotgun, like this Mossberg 500. This is a 12 gauge. 12 gauge shotgun is of course the most common shotgun uh, gauge. They're used by hunters everywhere. This is, they're everywhere. Now, the specifications for a 12 gauge shotgun or for a 10 gauge shotgun have their bore diameter at just a hair under 20 millimeters, which would make them legal. However, we run into some problems because on a shotgun like this, the, the bore is not going to be the same diameter everywhere. And what I mean by that is that if we look at the chamber, the chamber is going to be a little wider than that. And that's that it can accept the shell. Similarly, on most hunting shotguns, at the muzzle end, you'll have a widened out portion with screw threads. And that's so that you can install a removable choke. A choke is something to change the pattern of pellets as they fly. There are removable chokes. It's a very convenient system. It's one that you will find on just about any hunting shotgun that's recently made. So what this means is that depending on how you measure this and where you measure the bore diameter, you're going to come up with different numbers. And on a shotgun like this, if you measure it at the chamber, you're going to get a number that is wider. I haven't measured this one, but I'm going to bet that it's over 20 millimeters. Similarly, if you measure where the removable choke is, once the choke is removed, you're going to find almost certainly that it's going to be over. That's a problem. Now, when we look at the actual criminal code, criminal code has a whole lot of definitions in it. So under the firearms and other weapons section, it starts out with definitions. So A, ammunition, antique firearm, authorization, automatic firearm, cartridge, ma we've just gone from A to C and we haven't hit B. Bore diameter is not defined. That's a bit of a problem. Maybe it's a little further on. Not seeing it, but we do have this section on barrel length. This section on barrel length actually provides a good illustration because it shows us for the purpose of this part, the length of a barrel of a firearm is A, in the case of a revolver, the distance from the muzzle of the barrel to the breech end immediately in front of the cylinder, and in any other case, the distance from the muzzle of the barrel to and including the chamber, but does not include the length of any component part or accessory, including any component part or accessory designed or intended to suppress the muzzle flash or reduce recoil. What we see here is a very clear definition. You may not agree with this, you may not like it, but at least we can understand it. This is a definition that if we give it to two different people, even if they don't really know anything about guns, so long as they know what each of these terms mean, they can measure the same gun and come to the same measurement. That's important because when we're talking about barrel length, a handgun with too short of a barrel length is a prohibited firearm. So it's important that we know this and it's important that we have a consistent means of measurement. But I will tell you, bore diameter is not specified here. This creates a problem for us. How do we measure this? Now, Bill Blair has had uh, a bit of a comment on this. We'll just uh, skip over to what he says here. Bill Blair, 10 and 12 gauge shotguns were not prohibited on May 1st. Canadians deserve accurate information. We're not going to get it from Bill Blair, but please see an important clarification below. The regulation introduced on May 1st does not prohibit 10 and 12 gauge shotguns. The regulation for 10 and 12 gauge is based on their standard size, both under 20 millimeters. This is not legally correct. 
In accordance with acceptable firearm industry standards, the definition for bore diameter explicitly states that it is after the chamber but before the choke in shotguns. Therefore, if the measurement is taken at any other location, it is not a factor that is being considered under Amendment 95 of the regulations. Here's the problem. When he says the definition for bore diameter explicitly states it's not written into the law. Unless that's written into the law, we don't have a definition. The definition is ultimately going to be whatever a court decides it is. So, in terms of dealing with that, we have the possibility that the court may agree with Bill Blair. We also have, just, uh, we can skip over here to, this is a statement from the RCMP. It says, update on 10 and 12 gauge shotgun classification under the new prohibition. On May 1st, 2020, the government of Canada announced that it had made amendments under the regulations, skipping ahead, Prescri prescribing certain firearms as prohibited. One of the categories of the newly prohibited firearms include any firearm with a bore diameter of 20 millimeters or greater. The Canadian Firearm Program, CFP, of the RCMP adheres to the Association of Firearm and Toolmark Examiners, AFTE, definition for bore diameter measurements. The interior dimensions of the barrel forward of the chamber but before the choke. This is reflected in the RCMP's firearms reference table, which clearly states that in shotguns, diameter of the barrel forward of the chamber but before the choke. The CFP also recognizes the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute SAMI standards regarding firearms and ammunition. The SAMI chamber specifications for 10-gauge and 12-gauge shotguns do not include chokes, therefore indicating that chokes are not part of the bore. Accordingly, it is the CFP's view that, in accordance with acceptable firearms industry standards for shotguns, the bore diameter measurement is considered to be at a point after the chamber but before the choke. Further, in making classification assessments of firearms which are reflected in the firearm reference table, the CFP relies on recognized industry standard measurements. With respect to 10 and 12 gauge shotguns, the CFP recognizes the SAMI standard specifications which establish that the nominal, i.e. standard, bore diameter measurements for 10 and 12 gauge shotguns are below the 20 millimeter threshold. The reason for that second paragraph is that it is fairly common that shotguns may be overboard. And what that means is that they'll be bored a little wider than standard, which might mean that, and there's all sorts of ballistic reasons for why you do that, but it might mean that a particular shotgun exceeds 20 millimeters, notwithstanding the fact that it's marked as being a 10 or 12 gauge shotgun. What does all this mean? Well. This is an RCMP policy. So this is what the RCMP has decided that their view of the law is. So the RCMP is saying, we're not going to arrest people. We're not going to add things to the firearm reference table if there are 10 and 12 gauge. The problem with that is that the view of the RCMP is also not law. The RCMP does not get to determine the law. These are all things that might be considered by a court when the court ultimately decides how the bore diameter is to be measured. But the courts haven't done that yet. We don't know. The other thing I want to sort of re-return to here is Bill Blair's comments. So he says, the regulation for 10 and 12 gauge is based on their standard size, both under 20 millimeters. This is legally incorrect. It's flat out wrong because each firearm in and of itself, this particular gun, serial number, I'm not going to read it out, but this particular gun, this unique gun is going to be classified based on its actual unique characteristics. Every single gun is determined as prohibited or not prohibited in law, in a court, based on its particular state particular features, not based on their standard size specifications. This is a flat out incorrect statement. I hesitate before calling it a lie because Bill Blair may just be ignorant, but this is wrong. This is not correct. He should not be saying this to Canadians. He should not be saying this to the general public who are determining the veracity and the accuracy of his statements 
and determining whether or not this is a sensible piece of legislation. And he should not be saying this to gun owners who are potentially at risk. This is terrible. It also notes that, you know, when he says the definition for bore diameter explicitly states, until and unless there is a definition written into the criminal code or the regulations, there is no definition that has been decided on. A court will ultimately, if this is not corrected, pick a definition that fits with their, their thinking. This is a problem. Let's look or let's stop and think about this a little bit. Most shotguns have a fairly consistent bore diameter, but if we, there's no reason why that's necessarily true. If you think of something like a blunderbuss, which has a flared end, you could also imagine a shotgun that is a bit of an unusual design that might widen in the middle for some reason. Just this is a hypothetical shotgun, not something that I suggest you build. Where would you measure that? if it's not of consistent length all the way through. And again, there's nothing in the law that says that we don't measure at the chamber, that we don't measure at, you know, the, uh, the choke end. How is a court going to decide this? Well, one possibility is that the court may decide that they, they like these standards and that they're going to write that into the law effectively by judicial fiat. That's the happiest scenario, but they might not decide to do that. What they might decide to do instead is just take the plain meaning of bore diameter and similarly take the plain meaning of a bore diameter, which is greater than 20 millimeters. Again, going back to the, uh, the law here, it says any firearm with a bore diameter of 20 millimeters or greater. They may decide that that means 20 millimeters or greater at the widest part, especially when we go back to the criminal code and we see that the criminal code specifies that barrel length, sorry, I've lost it here, that barrel length includes the chamber and it starts at the muzzle. A judge is gonna look at that and possibly consider that to be highly relevant here. When you think about measuring height, if, for instance, you had a law that said no one over six feet can go into a particular building for some reason, how are we going to measure height? Are we going to measure height at the shoulders? Are we going to measure height at the knees? Well, if that was written into the law, then they would say, yes, if you can't be more than six feet high at the shoulders, then that's how you'd measure it. But absent that, the ordinary meaning would say that we measure from the soles of your feet to the very top of your head. It's entirely possible that a judge is going to decide that the bore diameter is at the widest part, including any of these things, the chamber, the, uh, the choke. This is terrible drafting because it seems that Bill Blair did not mean to ban the 12 gauge shotgun but he may have done so by accident. And because what they're doing is they're unwilling to admit that they've made a mistake here, that they've drafted this badly, because they're unwilling to admit that, they're unwilling to fix it. This is a big, big problem. The other thing I want to draw attention to, as much as this is you know frustrating, and I know that a lot of gun owners are not going to be terribly happy with this information. But the other thing I want to draw attention to is this part of the RCMP statement. It says, further, in making classification assessments of firearms which are reflected in the firearm reference table. So this is the guide for what can be imported and what can't, what can be sold on a store and what can't. The CFP relies on recognized industry standard re measurements. What this means is that, let's say I am bringing in a shotgun because I am running a gun store and I want to sell these to the public. They're not going to measure the actual bore diameter of these shotguns. They're going to say, oh, it's a 12 gauge shotgun. 
Therefore, the measurement is 18.42 millimeters, and it can go on the shelves. But let's say later the RCMP are upset with you, and they want to they want to put you in custody. They want to ruin your day for whatever reason. They may decide to measure your shotgun, which may turn out to be overboard and may turn out to be over that 20 millimeter threshold. Now, having bought this shotgun at a legitimate retailer, having figured that it is legal, having even bought it post ban. So you figure, how could this be something that's illegal? I'm buying it after the ban. It still could. You still could get in trouble. You say, wait a minute. You know, I can hear you saying, but the RCMP has this policy. They're not going to do this. Well, the RCMP is not the only police force in Canada. I live in Edmonton. We have our own Edmonton police. They don't have to be bound by this. They could decide to go in a different direction. Similarly, the Crown prosecutors, they're not bound by this. They could decide that they think that the appropriate way to measure it is at the chamber. And they could decide to add those charges. That's entirely possible. And the RCMP has no power over that. We could have a judge who decides, you know what? I think this is prohibited. We just don't know what's going to happen. The other thing I'm going to mention is that the RCMP have given policies like this before. You might remember the LAR-15 magazine, which is a magazine intended to fit into a pistol, and therefore 10 rounds. And initially, the RCMP gave an opinion that said that that was perfectly legitimate, and that you could have 10 rounds in that magazine, even if you then moved it to a rifle. The RCMP has since changed its view on that, and since then has decided that these are prohibited magazines. That whole issue is really something for another video. I cut out a digression where I discussed that a bit. But what it shows us is that the RCMP can change its view overnight. The RCMP could very well, because the bore diameter is not written into the law, they could decide tomorrow that they think that the proper way of measuring the bore diameter is in fact to measure the chamber on a shotgun or measure the widest part, which would make a whole lot of ordinary shotguns now prohibited in the view of the RCMP and the court would have to sort it out. The other thing I just want to mention because I find it deeply ironic is that the shotguns least affected by this are going to be ones that are combat or tactical models. The reason why is that those are going to have just straight cylinder bore and they're unlikely to have removable chokes. It's actually more likely that a hunting designed shotgun is banned by this screw up than tactical or combat shotguns. It makes no sense. It is absolutely without any sense. So the the long or the short version of this, if you you know, if you need the bottom line is that this is an area where because of extremely poor legislative drafting. A shotgun may be banned, notwithstanding the promises of Bill Blair on Twitter. If you think Twitter is a legal document, it just isn't. I, I don't really know what to say more than that. It's just not. But notwithstanding those promises, they may have screwed up and inadvertently banned the most common hunting shotguns in Canada. Anyway, I hope this has brought maybe not some clarity, but at least a little more understanding to this. If you've enjoyed this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Show it to your friends. Bring it up the next time this argument comes up. I really do appreciate it. It is helping the channel grow. Thank you as well to my $10 Patreon supporters, Ma Buddy Keith, Process Eng, and Stephen Larson. If you want to join them, there's a link to my Patreon below. Once again, I hope this has armed you with some knowledge. I, I wish I had a better answer for you or a happier answer or even a clearer answer. But this is what we've got. Thank you.